Excellent. All right, we're going to get fired right up with news you can use for today. Uh, we're going to do the rapid fire version today. There's four things I want to cover. Number one, uh, the Fed announced today that they are primed for a 50 basis point increase. Now, keep in mind, the Fed's stated policy is to raise interest rates only a quarter point at a time. Uh, 50 basis points would be a half a point at a time. And I suspect that at their next meeting uh, later this month or next month, not sure when the next one is, uh, they're going to go up 50 basis points. The reason for this is, and their stated reason is that they're having a hard time chasing down this inflation thing. They they dropped or they, they increased the uh, rate by a quarter point uh, earlier in the month or last month now, and it didn't seem to do any good. Inflation actually kicked up a little bit. So uh, I, I expect they're going to apply the sledgehammer approach rather than the tack hammer approach on this next deal. Um, and I think it's going to be higher than they were expecting for the whole year. In other words, they were expecting a, a total of six increases of a quarter point, a percent and a half. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go up to maybe two and a half percent this year, which is actually a lot because we started at 0.25. So we start at one quarter of one point. I expect at least a 2% increase, so 2.25%, the Fed level, which translates into probably 7 or 8% interest for a homeowner on a homeowner loan. Uh, that's the first thing. Number two, uh, The Street Online Magazine said in today's article, more signs of a troubled housing market emerge. They listed essentially four things. The Mortgage Bankers Association uh, came out yesterday and said there are, quote, negative trends going on uh, in the market itself with the financing. Now, now, keep in mind, the key to the housing market isn't just how many buyers and sellers, it's how many buyers who have a loan or have cash. Typically, it's a loan. It's probably 90 plus percent of the buyers have to have some kind of a loan. So the uh, MBA has said that on a week over week basis, this week versus last week, 10% less loans were applied for. And on a year over year basis, 62% less loans. That's a significant amount uh, considering that is that is essentially the buyer pool with the exception of that small tranche of cash buyers. Now we've talked in past episodes about there's not a lot of cash buyers out there anymore uh, for a lot of various reasons. You can go back and look at one of these uh, older news you can use. Kevin could probably point you to which one that is where we discuss those factors. But essentially the whole game is in the mortgage uh, business. Uh, 30-year fixed rate this last week was up to 4.9%. That's six weeks in a row where we've seen an increase. And the refi market is essentially fried. Uh, refinance, which had been a big piece of the game for these mortgage originators and lenders, has essentially disappeared. Very few people are refinancing at 4.9%. Uh, keep in mind that we predicted that we'd be at 5% by the end of the month. The Fed was saying, and a lot of these prognosticators were saying that maybe we'd be four plus percent by the end of this year. We're already at 4.9. I think we're easily going to clear that benchmark by the end of April. Number three, uh, and this was a shock, um, and this was as a result of study by some of the insurance groups. They determined that there is 1.7 million homes in the state of Florida that are empty. These are vacant houses. Now, they could be for a lot of reasons. People got foreclosed off of the properties. Uh, you know, it could be potentially between tenants. Uh, but primarily, these are homes that could go into the market to be sold. So uh, the people in Florida were shocked. It's a 17.3% vacancy rate. So almost one out of every five houses in the state of Florida is vacant as of the date of this call. That's a shocking rate. During the Great Recession, that it peaked at one out of five homes. We are almost there right now. We're very, very close to that same level that we had during the Great Recession 2009, 10, 11. Um, and surprisingly, Florida is not the worst place in the US. It's the sixth worst place. There are five states ahead of it that actually have a higher vacancy rate. Nationwide, they've determined there are 16 million vacant homes. That's 11.5% of the 139 million homes that are in the United States. So that is a shocking number. Once again, we peaked at about 1, uh, 15% nationwide 
during the Great Recession, we are essentially two thirds or a little bit more of the way there now, 70% roughly, um, 70 or 75% actually. So, you know, this was a big surprise. Uh, of course, those of you who've paid a recent homeowners or gotten a recent quote for homeowners insurance know that these insurance cats have figured this deal out ahead of time. And that's our fourth item is homeowners insurances are skyrocketing right now. Well, one of the things that the homeowners companies are doing, you know, the large insurers, is they are taxing, it's, it's their form of tax called homeowners insurance. They're taxing those of us who have a home, higher rates to insure our home in order to pay for securing those vacant homes that are out there. So they've, they've gotten onto this thing for the last two or three months. They saw these rates rising, and now we're at a very, very large rate. Um, you know, when people talk, especially those in the real estate industry, traditional uh, ham and eggers in the real estate business, the brokerage next, network, basically the National Association of Realtors, NAR, um, these folks are telling you, oh, you know, the sky is falling. There is a ton of uh, buyers out there, and there's only 600,000 houses for sale. Uh, not even that, probably more like 500 or 400, those kinds of things. Well, what about these 16 million homes that are out there? Those things will eventually become occupied by somebody. Now, they may go back on the market as product to sell, or they may get tenants in them, but the national tenant turnover is something like 0.75 of 1% per month. So not even 1% of the homes nationwide turnover on a monthly basis, probably three quarters, two thirds to three quarters of them will turn over. These are rental houses. Um, and there just isn't that much demand for rental houses. Now, as the economy gets worse, we've talked about this, people lose their homes, they'll move from owning a home down to a rental home. And from a rental home, if they lose that, they'll move into an apartment. From an apartment, they go to grandma's garage or someplace like that. So we've got this middle segment, 16 million vacant homes in the U.S. that will have to be disposed of or absorbed in some fashion. There's not enough renters out there to take all these things in. Now, I'm probably one of the only guys in the country who's telling me this right now. Everybody else is running around, like I said, with chickens with their heads cut off saying, you know, we got 4 million buyers and 400,000 homes and we're just not enough and nobody's building homes. You don't need to build homes. You got a boatload of homes out there that are sitting vacant right now. So put renters in them or get them on the market. And one of those two things is gonna have to happen because Vacant homes have the same problem that homes that we own have. One, you got to pay property taxes. The states are all desperate for money. Um, and so they're raising property tax rates where there is such a thing. Some states like Texas uh, have high rates and other states have uh, you know, higher income tax and very low property tax. California actually is a fairly low uh, property tax state. Um, not non-existent like some states, but they're raising taxes. Those property taxes got to be paid. The, the homeowner's insurance have to be paid. The homeowner's insurance is going up like we just talked about. And then there's the maintenance. There's all these rules in some of the goofy states like out here in California, that if you leave these homes vacant, unattended, and somebody gets injured, you're in trouble. It's like the host liquor law. You get yourself in deep doo-doo in that deal. And there are other issues that, you know, play into that. So, Somebody's going to address this thing. You're probably going to see this on all the national news here in the next month or two. But it just came out today, and you know everybody's acting shocked. Like, you know, where did this come from? How did these homes? How did it get 1.7 million in the state of Florida? 17.3 percent of the homes end up vacant in about a quarter of you know four, three, four, five months of time. Uh, you know, they're all in shock. Well, go back to the COVID thing. And you can see those people who were in forbearance. A lot of those guys couldn't get out of forbearance. A lot of them walked away from these homes. So don't let anybody out there tell you there's no homes available to buy. There is a boatload of homes to buy. You just got to find it. All right. 